guys how's it going how's your summer is it going great um as you can see it's been much <laughs> some great quality time with my cats doesn't he look so excited to be here miles right here um i hope you guys are having a great summer i was thinking the other day it's been a hot minute since i've read a story so i thought i would i just walked to the library and got back and um, I got the book called Dear Mr. Dear Mr. Rosenwald. Um, I just read the synopsis and I thought it would be really good so I haven't read it. It's gonna be my first time reading it along with you guys. I'm hoping Alejandro doesn't knock down the tablet. Okay, so it was written by Carol Boston Weatherford and the synopsis said, Ovella's one-room school is not much to speak of, so when, so when town gets word that a man named Julius Rosenwald, the president of Sears, Roebuck & Co. Company, is donating money to help them build a brand new school, Ovella can hardly believe her ears. No more leaky roofs, wind rustling through the walls, or a sheet that splits the classroom into two. But in order to have a new school, the community will have to raise a lot of money and build the school themselves. How on earth will poor people find money to give away? Ovella wonders. Based on the true story of the Rosenwald schools, which empowered thousands of African-American communities to build schools for their children in the 1920s and 30s, Dear Mr. Rosenwald is a powerful and uplifting story for anyone who has ever dreamed of a better life. There's a little picture that goes along with it. It's hard to see because of the gloss. All right, you guys. Dear Mr. Rosenwald. And then it says, to all who support education and consider our children worth the sacrifice. Hmm. For our grandparents and great-grandparents affected by Jim Crow. Pianis, pianism and the debilitating effects of poverty. May the children of today be inspired and educated by the children of yesterday. It's nice. Here's a picture. I'm going to read it and then I'll show you guys a picture again. 1921, one room school. My teacher, Miss Mays, said, You can't judge a school by the building. When the roof leaks, she calls us vessels of learning. When the floor creaks, she says, knowledge is a solid foundation. Wind whistles through walls, blowing the sheets that splits the church into two classrooms. Me on one side, Junior on the other. Till I passed third grade, I sat beside him, counting with my fingers and fidgeting on the pew. Now I know better. My school is not much to speak of. But mama says I'm lucky, even if class don't meet during harvest. Down here, she said, some black children go to school in shacks, corn cribs, or not at all. Don't know what I'd do if I couldn't go to school. Harvest break, just when I memorize the timetables. Instead of learning long division, I'll be working in the field. Again, here's the picture. Sharecropping. Six long weeks, down row after row, me and Junior worked right alongside Mama and Daddy, picking cotton till our fingers bled. Finally, Daddy put the last bale on the wagon and rode to town. He said our share of the harvest should pay off the season's debt and leave money to spare. Daddy was wrong. He came home with rock candy for me and little brother, but bad news for mama. We owe more to the white man who owns the land than we made selling the crop. Same story as last year. After supper, I leafed through an old Sears catalog, wishing. Later, I heard mama fretting about the baby on the way. Another mouth to feed. I hope it's a girl. Supper. 
Uncle Bo ate supper with us. He sure talks a lot. I reckon because he's a preacher, but that don't explain why he eats so much. Between helpings, he invited Mama and Daddy to a rally at church tomorrow to drum up support for a new school. Soon as Uncle Bo said drum, Junior started rapping on the table, rat-a-tat-tat, rat-a-tat-tat. -tat. Mind your manners, Mama said. New school rally. Uncle Bo opened with a prayer. Then Professor James from the normal school stood on the pulpit, spoke as if he were used to people listening. Years ago, Booker T. Washington started Tuske Tuskegee Institute in Alabama. The college grew strong as an oak. Ooh, simile. But Booker T. would not seek the shade, not as long as young minds starved. Too many children, too few schools, and not nearly enough money. Julius Rosenwald, the president of Sears, Roebuck, has millions, earned every penny, and believes in sharing. Booker T's book, Up from Slavery, opened Mr. Rosenwald's mind. So when Booker T wanted to build schools, Mr. Rosenwald opened his wallet. After Booker T, Booker T passed away, Mr. Rosenwald kept building, not just schools, but pride. Before his foundation will give a cent, you have to raise money on your own. White folks have to pitch in too. There will be one hurdle after another. Do your children deserve a new school? Everyone in, ch in church stood clapping. How on earth will poor people find money to give away? Root taking. Taking root, sorry. The church deacons voted to give an acre of land for a new school, space for a building, playground, and garden. Land that would have been used for graves, now a seed is sowed instead.